Kaylee from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make my Heath herringbone crochet, yes it's crochet, mittens. I also have a hat pattern in this stitch so you can find that on my YouTube channel as well. Um, in order to make these mittens you will need a 7 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, woolies, thick and quick or any other super bulky weight yarn size 6. I also used a darning needle to attach the thumb to the mitten and you will also need the written pattern which you can find on my blog for free lakesideloops.com. You can also purchase a downloadable printable version from Etsy or Ravelry if you'd prefer that method of viewing the pattern. You can make these mittens uh, in five different sizes from baby all the way up to adult. The baby, the smallest size, does not have a thumb hole, so just keep that in mind um, when you're choosing your sizes. These mittens are worked in rows, so you're making sort of a long square or rectangle, and then you attach, you seam it together, this is my seam, and then close off the top to form the mitten. You leave a hole for the thumb, which you make separately, and then sew onto the mitten. All right, so for this video tutorial, I'm going to be making up the adult medium size. Again, there's five different sizes, and you can find all of the details for each size on the blog, and you can just follow along with me making the adult medium size in this video. So I've got a beginning chain of 20. If you are doing a different size, you would have a different beginning chain, and you can find all of those details on the blog, lakesideloops.com. So once you have your beginning chain, you need to slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. So not this chain, but this one. You're going to slip stitch, and then you're going to slip stitch into the next four chains. So you're going to have a total of five slip stitches at the beginning of your row. And this is going to be your cuff, and we're going to be working, so you're going to have a cuff like this. Now we're going to single crochet loosely into the next chain, and now we're going to herringbone single crochet in the rest of the chains in our row. So a herringbone single crochet is you insert your hook into the previous stitches front bar and into the next stitch. You grab your yarn and you pull it through and you want to pull it up nice and high. Then you yarn over and you pull through all three loops on your hook. So again you insert your hook into your previous stitches front bar right here and into your next stitch. Grab your yarn and you want to draw it up really high so it matches with the height of the other loops on your hook. You're going to grab your yarn and pull it through all three loops and that's a herringbone single crochet. So we're just going to continue to do that until we only have one stitch left in our row and then I'll show you how the last stitch is a little bit different. So I've reached the end of my row. I have one stitch left and this last stitch is a little bit different. You're going to insert into your previous stitches front bar, insert into the last chain, grab your yarn and pull it through and then you're also going to pull that through both loops that you have on your hook. So it's kind of like a herringbone slip stitch instead of a herringbone single crochet. Now for row two you're going to chain one and you're going to turn and for this row you're going to be working from the back to the front. So normally you'd go into your stitch like this, correct? But for this row we're actually going to be going into the back and through to the front. And we're not just going to be working into the stitch, we're going to be working into the stitch and into the back bar. So you're going to actually have the stitch and then this back bar on your hook for all of your stitches. So you can see your regular stitches along the top of your row and right here these are all back bars. So you're going to be working into all three, into these two loops up here and into this as well. You want to make sure your yarn is at the front of your work and you're going to insert your hook into the stitch and into the back bar and you're going to create a loose single crochet. 
Now you're going to herringbone single crochet, so you're going to go into your previous stitches, front bar, into the stitch and the back bar, grab your yarn and pull it through, and again you want to draw it up nice and high, and you're going to yarn over and pull it through all three loops on your hook. So again, previous stitches, front bar, into the stitch and the back bar, grab your yarn and pull it through nice and high, and then grab your yarn again and pull it through all three loops. So you're going to continue with the herringbone single crochet stitch until you have six stitches left in your row. The five, the last five stitches are going to be your cuff, so those are going to be slip stitches. The sixth stitch from the end is just a little bit different, so you're going to insert your hook into your previous stitches front bar, insert your hook into the stitch, grab your yarn and pull it through, and then pull it through both loops on your hook. So it's, again, it's like that herringbone slip stitch instead of a herringbone single crochet. Now you're going to move your yarn to the, to the back of your work, so you were holding it here before, now you're going to kind of move it to the back, and you're going to be slip stitching into the back loop of the next five stitches. So back loop only. So you can see the stitches are here and you kind of have to turn your work because the stitches are kind of laying facing that way. So you kind of have to turn so that they can, you can see them. And this is my front loop and this is my back loop. So I'm going to be slip stitching into my back loop only. And you should have five of these at the end of this row and the beginning of your next row. And that's how we create that beautiful ribbed look on our cuff. You can see it here and it's got great stretch and it looks like rib knitting. And that's just slip stitching into the back loop only. And that is the end of row two. So we're going to chain one and turn. Now, as I said, row three, you're going to be starting off with slip stitches into the back loop only. So again, if I look, I have to kind of have to turn, rotate it toward me and find that back loop. And we want five of these. And the looser you make these, the easier it is to stick your hook in there. These don't have to be tight, that's for sure. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Now our next stitch is going to be a loose single crochet and we're going to be working into the stitch and into the back bar. Grab your yarn and pull it through, nice loose single crochet. Now we're going to do herringbone single crochets until we get to the last stitch and again you're working into the stitch and into the back bar. So you can see I went into my stitch and into the back bar for all of these herringbone single crochets. All right, and if you're not sure where your last or what your last stitch is, you can always count your stitches. To do that, always look at the top of your row, and you can see one, two, three, four. So you just count them and make sure that you have enough. And on that last stitch, again, it's a little bit different. It's like a slip stitch instead of a herringbone single crochet. It's like a herringbone slip stitch. That is the end of row three. So from here it's just repeats of row two and row three. Um, if you're doing any size other than the baby size, you will come to a point where you leave a small gap by doing a chain and slipping or skipping two or three stitches and that just creates a hole for where your thumb will go. Um, I'm going to skip ahead and show you what we do next. All right, so as you can see here, I've finished all of the rows for my adult medium size and now it's time to join the beginning row to the last row to form your mitten. So I'm going to flip this around like this and I want to fold it so that my herringbone stitch is facing in on itself 
and the wrong side or the non-herringbone side is facing out. So we're going to seam this together while it's inside out and then we'll turn it right side out once we're done. So you're just going to be slip stitching into your last row and into your first row. So I'm just going to show you that a little more closely. Again, I've got my hook through my last row, a stitch in my last row, a stitch in my first row, and I'm just gonna grab the yarn, pull it through, and slip stitch. So we're just joining our last row and our first row together. And again, our mittens are inside out, so our herringbone design is showing on the inside. And we just do this all the way down. All right, so once you've seamed together the side, you're going to, you see your cuff is here at the bottom, you're going to join together the top. So you have this hole here at the top of your mitten. You're just going to insert your hook, grab some yarn, and slip stitch across to close this off. You could use your darning needle here if you wanted to, just as long as you close this end up. Otherwise, of course, your fingers will get pretty cold. <laughs> I just insert my hook wherever I can make it fit. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just like that. All right, so once you've seamed together your side and the top, you're going to turn your mitten right side out. Now, this might be a little difficult. I found it particularly tricky with the baby size, um, but you can stretch this as much as you need to and it will go back um, into its nice cuff shape, into its nice tapered cuff. So you really gotta stretch that out. This part is not pretty but it'll all work out in the end, I promise. <laughs> and there we go. So your mitten is now right side out and you can see that you have a thumb hole right there. So you are going to crochet, you will see in the pattern, a nice little thumb hat. And we're going to attach this using a darning needle. I tried attaching this using um, the slip stitch method and it was really hard to get my thumb into the thumb hat, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, and my children found the same thing with their size, and so did the testers. So um, I came to realize that we really need to sew the thumb onto the mitten, otherwise the, the hole just is too tight and there's not enough give. So I thought I would show you how I did this. I left a really long tail when I finished with my thumb and I'm just going to use that tail to sew the thumb to my mitten. Now if you're doing one of the two adult sizes you're going to have eight single crochets and you're going to have three stitches that you skipped here, three chains up here, and then you could put one stitch in on this end and one stitch in on this end for a total of eight all the way around. If you're doing the toddler or the kid size, you'll have two stitches that you skipped. So two here, two chains, and one on either end for a total of six, which is how many single crochets is in your thumb. So basically we're doing a stitch here, one, two, three, a stitch here, one, two, three, for the adult sizes. And again, for the kids, it's a stitch, one, two, a stitch, one, two. I hope that makes sense. So you're just gonna go into your thumb and then into your mitten. And then I'm gonna go over to the next stitch in my thumb and the next stitch in my mitten. And I'm just going to do that all the way around, as I said, until you have secured your thumb to your mitten. So when you are finished, you should have something that looks similar to this, and your mittens are complete. 
These are very thick, very cozy, definitely will keep you warm if you're in Canada or anywhere really, those cold winter days. Thank you so much for following along. I hope that you enjoyed this pattern. I would love for you to su subscribe to my YouTube channel to check out all of the other crochet and knitting designs I have available for you.